large black flakes in there. Kind of, yeah, it's definitely got a stank to it. I love the color on this one. Ridges where the different sections. What's happening, Fisham friends? Welcome to another episode. Got a box today. Yes, an unboxing. It's been a minute since I've done one. This is some stuff that I've had for a little while from Z Bait Co. If you guys and gals watch Burley Fishing, that's where I first saw Z Bait Co. Like their actual baits in action. I've heard of them on Instagram and I thought I had a couple packs of their stuff, but I guess I didn't. So um, as soon as that live was off, they, Burley had uh, the owner of Z Bait Co. on there and talked. Super nice guy, very humble and doing all the stuff. He's doing everything. He's doing his own packaging. He's making all this in his house slash garage deal. Everything he's doing right there in-house made in the USA. I'm like, dang, this dude is doing a ton in gr of grinding. Uh, and I appreciate that. So I put in a big order with him because he has some darn cool stuff. And I wanted to share that with all of you. So enough yapping. Let's take a look. Okay, now the cool thing that I learned talking to him, he does some of his own stuff. Some of these things he's designed his own mold, um, shoots all these. You know, these are all his creations uh, in the white packages like this. Now in the green packages, uh, these are kind of generic molds, but he still does his own colors and stuff in them. So I got a little bit of both. Actually, I think this is the only green package thing. Everything else is white, meaning these are all things he came up with. So starting off, we're going with something that was pretty funky. I grabbed a couple of these. This is the Mud Puppy, seven and a half inch. Now I thought this could be killer during spawn because it looks like, you know, some sort of creature that's gonna uh, eat the babies of whatever they're trying to make in the bass spawning nest. But it's essentially this lizard meets salamander thing. I don't even really know what to call it. It's thin, uh, I like the profile of it. Like I said, a big bulky kind of profile here. Uh, you know, the tail is actually supposed to go up and down like that perpendicular to the body, uh, but it's got these ridges on it. Uh, and his June bug color is one of my absolute favorite June bug colors, like that old school, deep, deep, deep purple grape color. To me, this is June bug. He nailed it. Uh, it's got the green flake in it. Absolutely love the freaking color of that. I can't wait to get this on, you know, just a little shaky head or a Texas rig drag this around and see what this does during spawn. Now they definitely stink. This is his own uh, flavor concoction that he come up with. Uh, they call it bass syrup, coffee and garlic. Yeah, it's definitely got a stank to it. Grab that June bug color and I also grabbed some watermelon red and black flake. Really good looking watermelon color. I mean, that's kind of your standard watermelon. You can see there a little bit better through the tail. Uh, you're kind of greenish, almost like a real light uh, green pumpkin type deal, but you can see throughout watermelon with black and red flake. Good job. Oh, and I just noticed in the camera there, look at that. He's even got a Z Bait Co. symbol in the plastic. That's awesome. Mmm, bass syrup. Okay, next up I grabbed uh, some of their craws. They call them armor craws. Now these are pretty cool because I thought these could have a few different uses and I bet as soon as I hold it up, um, a lot of you are going to think kind of the same thing that I did when I saw them on the show. Now you see they've got these two little legs or arms here. Uh, claws looking things. Those are pointed, so those are gonna flap. And it's also got the two an antennae, antennae, antenna, whatever you call them there, break those apart. So those are gonna, you know, kind of do the and back. Now, when I first saw this, I thought maybe a, a chatterbait. I think it'd look cool in there. I got white. You don't see white a lot uh, because I thought of the white rigging it this way for the old swim jig. I like trying different trailers on the swim jig. Um, I think this one could look cool on there. I don't know, comment below and let me know what would you all use. I think I've even got some of those bigger uh, EWG net heads that you could almost put on this or like a little shaky head uh, and do some cool stuff with this. So I don't know, just kind of a cool little bit different craw. I can think of a, a few different ways to rig this, but I'm interested to hear what would you do with it? So that was Pearl White. Next up, I've got one of my absolute favorites. If I can ever find this in companies, I get it. And just so you can see, these are 4.25 inches and you get seven in this pack. I'm a real big fan of two-tone colors because if you have like a green pumpkin jig, depending on what you want that jig to look like underwater, you can either put that black and blue side up or you can put the green pumpkin side up. I, I really like those. I think they're really versatile and just gives kind of a different look to it. You know, it's not, not just one solid color. You know, when you pop it up, you've got, you can see that black and blue when it's moving this way. You can see the green pumpkin on top. I'm a big fan of those. I like those those two tones when companies do that. I try to uh, to grab them when I can. And then last in the Arma Cross, I, I think I said Arma Cross earlier. It's Arma, Arma Cross. This is another color I love when companies do this. You don't see it a lot, but it's that June bug color on one side and then green pumpkin on the other. He calls it Bama bug. I feel like some companies, the Bama bug, it's kind of hit and miss. Uh, I like the Bama bug in Reaction Innovations. There's a few other companies where it's kind of, uh, I love the color on this one. He has nailed to me what June bug color is, that deep, dark, grape purple. 
Uh, then that green pumpkin on the other side. I love it. Awesome job on these. Really digging those little crawls. Okay, next up, I've got a bunch of packs of these because on that live with Burley, when they were talking to the owner, he said that this was his best seller year over year. This is one of the things that they're kind of known most for. So from Z Bait Co., they call this the Bamboo Bomber. Now again, this is the watermelon red flake, good in you know clearish water, not super dirty stain because as you can see, it is pretty see-through, uh, a natural looking color. It's got these two little kind of leg things down here and then the back, you can either leave this together or break this apart like so to give it a little bit different look. So uh, I saw that he said that he really likes to drop shot this. I mean, that's one way you could do it. I, when I saw this, first thought was this going this way with it, Nico rig. Actually, the hook would be here. You'd be pulling it this way. But Nico rig that to look like a cross scooting away. The weight would be down here. Your hook would be in the middle. When you pop it, that would be popping just like a crawfish trying to get away. So that was the first thing that popped in my mind when I saw it. Of course, drop shotting things isn't ever the first thing that comes to mind because, well, uh, this would be good as a really small Texas rig, just kind of dragging it around, flipping and pitching around stuff. Uh, it's nice because it doesn't have a bunch of appendages, so even if you're in kind of brushy wood, this should go straight down and come up pretty easily. So, uh, interesting little bait. It's flat on the bottom, but on the top it's got kind of these little ridges where the different sections of the lure is. Uh, cool design. Again, I mean, you could almost put this on the, the back of a chatter bait. You could pull these little side deals off. I don't know. Again, that's what's fun about different fishing lures is different people use them different ways and still catch fish. So uh, for me, I bought it for the Nico rig, Neko rig, whatever you want to call it. Heck, honestly, you could probably even wacky rig this and catch some fish. I don't know. Cool. I also got this in that Jumbug color. Again, you get seven in here. They're five inches long. Uh, good size. Good, man, good smell to them. I can definitely smell that they're bass syrup, but that Junebug color is... Is perfect to me. I mean, that is, that's it. When I think June bug, that's it. Super dark purple like that. Mm. Have I said I like that color? I also got some green pumpkin magic, which is a green pumpkin with a gold black flake. If this had purple in it, to me, this is like one of the best ways to mimic bluegill when you have like that black flake, gold flake, and some sort of purple on it. Oh, I'm a sucker for purple, but I really like that color. That's a, a neat kind of different, you know, that flash. You'd be surprised how much when you get one of these baits in semi-clear water with sun coming down on it. Man, that red, I think I've got a red here coming up, but red or any sort of gold, any sort of flashy color like that really does stand out. Speaking of, I got this color called Green Magic. It's got like the silver flake in it and red flake in it, but it almost has like a green, green hue to it. I think there's like a green highlight powder in there maybe. Uh, that's adding to that color. Interesting color. I like that one a lot. Kind of a cool spin on a, you know, a watermelon or a green pumpkin magic type deal. And last, I've got a color that's a limited edition, green pumpkin blue ice. Now, I like this on here. He shows the different ways to rig it with an EWG hook. Uh, you could tear it down as part of a jig trailer or on a shaky head. I like that. I like when companies do that. Does it give the hook sizes? Yeah, three uh, Gamagatsu uh, as a peg Texas rig. I think that helps new anglers out a ton when they put the hook size and stuff. I can't tell you how many people I've had uh, ask me for different plastics. What hook size do you use? What type? Um, so I think it's helpful when companies do that. Doesn't mean that's what you have to use, just as kind of a helpful tool for, uh, for beginners. So let's look at this color, a limited edition color. So that bottom is like a bluish green, almost a teal. This will probably be a good bluegill imitation too. Uh, and then just green pumpkin on the other side. Does this have any flake? It's got black flake in it and that's all. And then kind of that highlight bluish green. So cool color. We'll see uh, We'll see how this does. But again, I really think uh, the Nico rig is going to be money for that. Okay, real quickly on the swimmers, I did grab some of these. Now these are not, uh, you know, like his own mold. This is a generic mold, again, as shown by the green color on there. But uh, this is a 3.25 inch swimmer. You get a seven count in here, pearl white. Uh, I actually needed some more swimming baits like this. So I grabbed some, you know, similar to like a, a Kitek or a, a Rage swimmer. So grab some of those. I, I like this one, which is a smallmouth candy. Almost looks like the Smalley Magic, as you can see. Kind of that green with green glitter on top and then pearl white with like a little bit of silver flake in the bottom. Good natural color. And last, I got some bronze gizzard shad. So kind of that bronze sparkly up top. And then the bottom is like a pearl white with silver in it. Good natural color again. I mean, mimicking a minnow, this will work everywhere. Okay, lastly for the plastics, I was surprised by these uh, when I saw the size of them. So this is called 
the twig. This is a little four inch stick bait. I was really intrigued when I saw it because uh, I noticed on the uh, the show, he said, these are great as a wacky rigged drop shot option. And I thought, oh, I need to up my drop shot game. So I'll try some of these. And again, you can see on the packaging here, he's got the drop shot, you know, all the different stuff there that you can do with it. But I was so surprised when I saw the size of these, I was not expecting them to be uh, this small, this twiggy. Now, you can see they've got a lot of good action there. I can see how these would work really well for a drop shot. Uh, but just for size comparison, this is the four and a half inch pocket rocket. So this is small. This is a small little wacky rig. One of my favorite uh, wacky rigs that I throw. This little guy. But look at the twig. Size comparison to that. Smaller, thinner, little profile, tiny thing. So for a, a wacky rig drop shot, I think it'll look pretty cool. So that first one was green pumpkin. This one is called Gobi Time. Now I remember when I was saying I wanted that kind of green pumpkin-ish with like that gold and purple flake and some black in there. Well, that's what they did here. This color looks sweet upon sweet. I don't have gobies around here that I mimic uh, or you know try to match. Uh, but for bluegill, this is a perfect way to match a little juvenile bluegill, that goby color. Uh, so just a hint, if you're around here in the Midwest, goby works well for uh, for gills. Mimicking them, not catching them. I also grabbed brown pumpkin, which was one of my favorite colors as a kid. I didn't honestly throw like a green pumpkin specifically a lot. More of this brown pumpkin, I would say, is more of what I had when I was younger. So I grabbed one of these. Uh, here, let me show you. I was happy to see that he had that in the brown pumpkin. So the dark green pumpkin that we're all used to and kind of that brown pumpkin. Just a little bit of a difference. Will it make a huge difference to the fish? I don't know. A lot of times it's just a confidence thing, but I like to switch it up. Sometimes being a little bit different gets that bite. Again, I think I've probably beat this horse to the ground, but that June bug color, it's purple. It's real June buggy. I like it. Of course I grabbed one. And the final color was a Monster Bass exclusive. So uh, apparently he paired up with Monster Bass. They did an exclusive color that was, uh, you know, they did for that box. And I think they had leftover of this color. Uh, this is called Baby Gill. Speaking of that Baby Gill color, if you want to get something to mimic Baby Gill, this will do it. Orange flake, green flake, large black flakes in there. Kind of that greenish pumpkin. Nailed it. Either that or the goby. I mean, either one of these. This is to me yells like a, a green sunfish type thing or one of those pumpkin seeds. I like the look of that one quite a bit. That color is, that color spot on. All right, and last but not least, I grabbed some of their X blades, which is like their version of the underspin. So I grabbed some of these smaller ones for those little three point, whatever, two inch uh, swim baits that I got. So this is kind of similar to the owner flashy swimmer. I like how the setup is on here. I hope this wire is a little bit stronger because that's the only thing I don't love with the flashy swimmers is I break this under part off a lot, but Good, super sticky, sharp hook on it, as you can see, sticks right into the nail. Um, interesting little design there, but I like it. And these are custom made. Somebody else custom makes these, I think, for him uh, and sells them. So we'll see how these do, but that's it. That's the box. Comment below and let me know what lure out of all these you're most excited to see. I think out of all these, I'm most interested in these. I think this will help force me to throw the drop shot with the wacky rig on there. I mean, last year, the wacky rig destroyed fish for me, so. Maybe this is the way that I can kind of ease into the drop shot and get a little bit more comfortable. The Nico or Neko rig also caught a ton for me, so I'm really excited to try this. Uh, but again, I'm not just gonna limit it to the Nico rig. I'm gonna try different stuff with it. I like the looks of that. So today's subscribe fish and friend uh, is the guys, Paul and Jeff over on the Burley channel. Uh, make sure you check them out if you don't. I would have not have, you know, got to see the owner of Z Bait Co. Talk to him, you know, see how all that went and see how much hard work he's putting in. Y'all don't realize how much work goes into making plastics. He was bagging them up. He said there was like, when he did the Monster Bass order, they had like some odd thousand bags. It was him and like a couple other people bagged every single one of them by hand in his place. And I have so much respect for that. So thanks to the guys at the Burley Bunch for having uh, the Z-Bait Co. folks on. That was super cool. That's enough for me. Uh, I have to edit. It's late and I want to go to bed. So thank you all for watching. And uh, until next time, <laughs>